Hey guys, this is Lisa and today I have a super smart, super funny guest on my channel. It is my absolute favorite, Srishti Dikshit. Hello. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. We're going to be talking about love and sex. Exactly. So Srishti, I just watched the Ben's planning video um, about ghost stories mm -hmm. and you and Kusha came up with this term, WVPD. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> wet vagina pe dhoka. It is the best ever. Like, yes. Literally among my friend group, it's become like a it, term, it has. a thing. I'm so sure. glad it has I feel like we need on. to make this a trending hashtag, guys. <laughs> what are some WVPD scenarios that come to mind? One that comes to mind for me is like, you're making out, it's really hot and everything, and then he just can't find your clit. Mmm, that has <laughs> happened. Oh my God. Oh man, I hate that it's so like regular for us that this happens. Isn't it? When men just can't find just it. Just can't find it. Like they and might as well be dead. Your yes. elbow. It's right there. It doesn't occur to them that this is the way it has to go. I guess we need to communicate we need to more as well, things. though. Because I feel like we no, do. we do. I, I I don't I can't say I've for like all faked women, it. But yes, you know? that is a way, part of our lives. We have to. Otherwise, we can't survive. We have to fake it for like eighty percent of it. Which again, Which sad. <laughs> but let's stop faking it. Yeah, we should just use hashtag WVPD. WVPD, bro. Like this is yeah. This is this <laughs> is wet vagina. You're wasting an opportunity here, man. Do I think it we right. Make it a thing. Yeah. Okay. We should hold like training sessions for bro. men. <laughs> Oh or like for for real, we Google should have sex like, ed classes where it's about like sexual pleasure more than just the science of it. You know, there's and this amazing yeah. resource called OMG Yes, not the BuzzFeed Instagram thing. Yes. yes. OMG Yes, it is like the scientific study of the female orgasm, uh -huh. and there are women who volunteered to like literally have themselves filmed showing you yes. how it works for them. It is amazing. You should check it out. I think there's a show on Netflix uh, about this. Or like there's a there's a series. It's a non-fiction document series where the, one of the episodes is about the female orgasm and what do we not know about it. And turns out even women don't know a lot yeah, about it. Yeah, that's the thing. And yeah, like I watched that and I was like, I will probably never experience an orgasm, which kind of freaked me out because like that is a very real possibility that whoever I end up with, or if I'm in a monogamous relationship for the rest of my life, then. What if you never find that clit, bro? Like, what's gonna no, happen? No, we, we will show them where it is. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It, it will be a joint effort towards some kind of, like, we are both equally pleasured and happy. But, and also in, in an Indian context with arranged marriages, you can't, like, have sex before you, like, end up with someone for your whole life. And then you just have to, like, live with bad sex. Because divorce I don't know. is like, I don't know how that like it's works. A whole problem. Like, I I guess I shouldn't I mean you can't judge and people's contexts are different, but the idea of marrying someone without having had sex with them It's hardcore, yeah. Bl like is it blows my mind that like like our parents every, like did generations it. of yeah, people like have generations done that. did it and they were just okay with it. But I think female pleasure just was not part of the equation. It was exactly. like this duty that the wife has to her husband. Yeah, and uh, children like, with the, a woman's duty is just childbearing, that's it. Like childbearing and child rearing is the only <laughs> It really saddens me that this is not a conversation I've had with my mom or my sister. Mm -hmm. But like now I have to like talk to it, talk about it on like the internet where I find like many people DMing me, many, many girls DMing me and saying, hey, this really helped out because I can now show this to like people around me and like we can have a conversation about it. So I'm glad you're doing this. Like, this Thank really you. Cool. I just want it to be normal, you know, yeah. to, for people to be able to talk about this stuff. But okay, things got quite serious, but I want to bring it back <laughs> to... No, it's, come apologize. on, it is a serious topic. I mean, it's important, yes, rather. It's an yes. important topic. It doesn't have to be serious. No, but back to another thing you did actually in that episode. I love the little skit at the end mm -hmm. where you ghosted <laughs> Kusha. <laughs> oh man, fuck <laughs> boys and ghosting. Laugh. Too real. <laughs> Are there any memorable dating app stories that come to mind? Was that a skit based on personal I feel like it's anecdotes? happened to me on the regular and like so many times. Like I would start interacting with someone and uh, I, I prefer to move it to Instagram DMs before WhatsApp. So it would move there and then we would have a long conversation. We would be sending memes to each other. And then randomly I would just like they would just stop talking or like they would just fall off the face of the earth and like I would just text that hey what happened where are you where did you go 
and I would get no response. So that that has happened, but like I don't know. I can't. Re- I don't really blame when blame someone when they do that because it's like I the nature of the beast. That. Yeah, like you, it's it's part of the game. Like if you're not vibing with someone, mm. it's very uncomfortable and awkward to tell it to their face. Like I, I'm sorry, I'm not getting along mm. with you. So like it's just easier to it's, ghost, yeah. which I understand, but it's obviously not cool. Like ethically, you shouldn't ghost people, but I've done it and I get it. It's fine. What do you think are the best and worst aspects of dating as a millennial? Oh man, I can write a book about this, <laughs> but there are many books about this already, so I won't. Millennial dating, the the biggest hang up or the hiccup I face in my like first hand experience, it's just that I have to pretend like I'm interested in your life and I need to get to know you like that first part of dating someone is like you just have to ask so many questions hey what do you like where are you from and what do your parents do and you have siblings like I don't want to ask any of those questions I just want to get into it I just want to start the relationship and just be intimate already but obviously that is not going to happen I have to invest some time in finding like out about cut out the small talk and get straight to yeah, being let's just, vulnerable let's just get straight to what are your traumas what are your triggers what pisses you off what makes you really happy what is the one thing you're really passionate about that's it like those are the five things I would like to know about a person right off the bat which is crazy like I can't I have to build it up with hmm so what are you doing today <laughs> and how was your day and did you get traffic oh, on man. your on way to your work, it's dumb. I feel you. But I think more and more as it's becoming more acceptable for people to be open about their inner selves. Yeah. I think people are people sharing are, more. For sure. And men are becoming more vulnerable, which is amazing. Like High time, men would right? not talk about their feelings. Toxic yeah. Exactly. Ideas of masculinity. Finally, men are understanding that it is okay to A feel, B talk about those feelings and C seem like a regular person who doesn't always have to be this guy who has to protect you or like he has to be macho or toxic or just like gaslighty. You can be a real person who is just as flawed. As and in fact, goal. it makes you attractive. Yeah, it makes you all the more human attractive. I would like to do you. Yeah, like it would, <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> just throwing that in there. Just do it. If you're yeah. like that, I would like to do you. We I would, would like do you if you're vulnerable <laughs> and crying mostly. Yeah, my type. So on that note, what are the qualities that you look for in a partner other than vulnerable and in touch with your emotions? It's super cliche, but sense of humor. And by sense of humor, I just mean that they, I should be laughing at things you do. I don't care if like other people find it funny or whatever. And also a certain degree of self-awareness. Like you should be aware of whatever privileges you have, which, whatever background you're from, like whatever, like... Your issues even. Yeah, your issues mostly. Like it's so convenient to think only your partner is flawed and you are perfect mm-hmm. and so all issues in the relationship are because of them. Yeah. But like I am fucked up. I mean yes. I know I'm bringing a ton of issues to the table. Yes, yes, exactly. Like be aware of your own baggage and also just not have an idea of the person you're dating because like whenever you do get together with someone uh, you always expect them to be a certain way and like they These you already have an judgments. assumption about them but then they are a real whole person with their experiences their traumas their baggage so you need to be accommodating of that like you need to let go of your expectations and let this person be a whole person by themselves so whoever like is open to doing that I'll do you this is just a sex call <laughs> that is multiple what? times <laughs> vulnerable uh, let me be me and tell me about your traumas and we can we, we see where this goes from here yes. you're gonna get people are gonna be sliding into your DMs people tonight. are gonna be really creepy in my DMs <laughs> but it's my fault I have asked for it and money yeah I would love money in a man that is really attractive to me. No, it's dumb. No, no, I'm the man. In, like, I would like to be the one who makes a lot of money. So, like, maybe this person is intimidated by how much money I make. Like, that would be fun. I get this so many times in comments. Like, the only thing women actually want is money. Yeah. All this stuff. It's so stupid. It's I true. Feel like people will. I would say that we do want money. It doesn't mean that we want it from the man. But we I want money. Ma- no, no, but in, in the I sense. I want of my own money. Like, I want to make money myself and like be super rich and that's not wrong like it's fine to want to like it also depends on like the background you've come from or if you face any like harshness in life regarding that no but i mean like this characterization of women as gold Gold diggers diggers, yes yes. it is so so 
tired yeah. as a stereotype and should be retired now that's why i'm saying i want the flip i want to be the i want to be the man and the man needs to be the gold digger and then let's see what happens what for you is the biggest turn on forearms a man should have nice moisturized forearms that is my big turn on <laughs> so lame but that is what Specific. it is <laughs> yeah and what about your biggest turn off bo and also bad breath like that just no matter even if you are goddamn nelson mandela but if you have bad breath i cannot i'm sorry <laughs> like you can be the nicest person in the world but if you have bo and bad breath then i it just i just brush your teeth it's use really deodorant it's so shallow it's so shallow i hate myself but that those are the facts but like apart from physical attributes i would say uh, my biggest turn off is i don't know when men are just obtuse like when they are just like they don't get a problem they, they just lack empathy like a, an unempathetic man is like the biggest turn off to me like if i'm telling you about a problem all you have to do bro is just say that sucks man i understand I, it's so hard to be you sometimes like you just say like encouraging things to me don't try to like solve my problem or whatever but like just try to understand where i'm coming from instead of like dismissing it or just saying that that's how it is and like what can you do like that that really puts me off about a man so yeah unempathetic men are a giant turn off what do you like on your period oh i'm a moody bitch <laughs> i'm very <laughs> cranky <laughs> i'm just so bitter i just do, i don't understand it's irrational God, i, have I a just become melt down yeah i become like a the worst version of myself and i i lock myself like i i lock myself away from the world like i would not like to see someone when i'm on my period and i get these like existential crises yes. questions pop up that like i like penis envy is so high <laughs> while you're on your period it's like why could i not just have had a penis like finally the, when you start bleeding though they go yes. away yeah yeah that is right? true that kind is true. of that yeah so, I mean, somewhat the, somewhat but then you're bleeding yes then you are still in pain <laughs> and it's unnecessary and then you're like do i even want a child like it's just a exactly like, my body is doing this but it's kind of doing it for a choice that i end up like i, that I might not even make, even yeah, make. like i may not even want one biological child yeah so yeah i think about a variety of things like that and also like stupid things like really the the minutest of inconvenience would like tick me off and irrevocably like it would just like set me off so much that i would have to be removed from the room and like stuff like that so <laughs> so yeah i'm i'm a monster when i'm <laughs> on my period do you have any period cravings ha ah, the regular ones yeah chocolate ice cream the i would like to thing. like bury my face in ice cream or something what's the funniest thing you believed about sex as a kid i think at some point during my childhood i believed that if you held hands you could become pregnant <laughs> which now i have learned that it's it was a giant misconception generally like a lot of people believed it in my hometown did you get to talk to your parents about no, sex or was there a sex talk no we not had to talk not had like my parents my dad uh, spoke to me about like menstruation when like i got my first period which is cool which is not a, like not a regular common thing that would happen where i'm from but uh, Yeah about sex there's just some unspoken discomfort and like so they'll watch your content they watch my content and, and never mention it I feel it. like they know that I am like sex could be sexually active but well, like Well they know now they know now but like they they would never address it directly How would you describe your first sexual experiences Uh mine would be I feel like how it is for like most women who are born and raised in India it was not consensual because a lot of times we are we are young and we are just ch- children and then there are predatory men around us who are either groping in public or flashing or masturbating so like it's almost all, all the women that I have ever spoken to in my vicinity have told me that like the first time that they encountered a penis it was not in a con- consensual setting so like it was pretty much the same for me i was in fourth grade i think and i was waiting at a bus stop and this man was on a bike he uh, saunters into the scene and he just like parks it there and he just like zips it, it, like unzips and flashes his dick and i was petrified of that 
because he also had a really creepy smile while he was doing it so like more than the dick the face really freaked me out so i just like ran back home and i think i was late to school that day but i i still ended up going to school but like i remember not talking to anyone about it it was just like okay this is a thing that's happened but let's not act like this has affected me at all and yeah it's like that for a lot of people but consensually i feel like my first experience was when uh, again when i was uh, fairly young and like i was interested about knowing what masturbation would be like because i had just watched my first ever porn and it was like wow this is interesting and they are all seeming like they're having a great time and maybe we should also try something like this so yeah the first time i masturbated was hilarious awkward confusing interesting and uh, yeah it was it was fun but yeah that, those were the first the two firsts <laughs> of my life the one non consensual rite of passage for indian women and one like self discovery cute cool one <laughs> and it's interesting how those experiences then can impact our first sexual experiences with exactly. partners yeah. that both the trauma of having been on the receiving end of non-consensual predatory advances but yes. also the self discovery from from yes. discovering your own pleasure yes 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 both have shaped how i am intimate with a man like it would it would always play a role like the way men touch you approach you ask you if you're comfortable if you're okay if they are receptive to feedback like all of that really like comes together and yeah what do you wish you'd known earlier about sex that you you call the shots like you don't have to agree to everything the man is telling you to do like you don't have to suck a dick you don't have to uh, you know it like, isn't a performance yeah it's not it, a it's talent and show. it's not like porn like someone should have mm. told us early on na like that it's not going to look like porn feel like porn or be like born in any in any shape or form like i remember uh, my earlier experiences it was just like if making out or whatever and it was just like i would just moan i would get oh uh, oh uh. and then the the guy or whoever i'm with would be like what are you doing nothing is happening why are you moaning but i don't know like i've seen women do that in like born and like It, is, isn't like, that turning don't you on? expect it yeah mm-hmm. isn't that like something i should be doing and it's just i have realized no i don't need to be doing it and yeah it's just uh, the knowledge of like that person has to be there for you just like you're there for them that is something that i've not been able to assert like i wasn't able to assert early on but like now i can like now i can tell a person that these are things that will make me happy or like i'll enjoy it more and like you also tell me what you would like for me to do and like that i feel like it should be like a very equal equal give and take like we should talk about what makes us happy and what gets us going as i'm nearing 30 i've run out of patience for like you can't figure it out by yourself let me tell you these are the things you should do this is a checklist if you uh, hit all of this then we are good let like it's been a good experience if not then it's cool i mean we'll probably not do it again but like yeah. <laughs> it's fine what's your funniest sexy memory I didn't really know how to kiss when I started kissing people. <laughs> then I watched a video <laughs> on how to kiss. And then I think I made out with the mirror. I tried to like make the faces. <laughs> More people than they'd like to admit will have done that. You know because it's so you I feel like it is so normal to worry that you're not worry about being good. Yes. And not know not know what being good how, means. How like, to until, do that? Yeah. Right? The struggle is real. The struggle <laughs> is very real and it's like no I feel like men are expected to be better at it and like lead everything when especially in a heterosexual Context. setup but like uh, no like women should be women should know what they like and what they are good at like it's and what works for them and, and what works for them i personally feel like blow jobs are the one a uh, moment in a sexual experience where the woman has a lot of power and like it is empowering to give blow jobs you have full control over this person in that moment in time you can do anything so like that really like makes i guess me... for both parties oral sex yeah, to yeah. provide oral sex yes. is instead of seeing it as some favor you're doing to the yeah, person it, it can be, be something yeah, that's it quite be something empowering it's something that is empowering yeah it's yeah. like i ha- i i'm you are capable of providing right so much pleasure also to somebody in this amazingly unilateral way yes exactly 
I feel like it's men and fun. women. Yeah, I think men should definitely stop thinking that they're doing women a favor when they're going down on them. Yeah, you men know? should also stop saying that I am helping you raise the baby. Like it's your baby also. Like, yeah, so many things. Haven't you seen couples where the men are like, I'm helping with the child. You're not helping. It's your child. Like it's yeah, like, not like, just. What a good dad. Yeah, he, he changes the diaper. He didn't what a go good to work today because <laughs> he was sat with his child for two seconds. Like what a good boyfriend. He goes down on me. It's so. Yeah. The bar we, is we, so low. We need to stop like <laughs> rewarding regular behavior that should be decent behavior. Have you seen this like... account called Awards for Good Boys? Oh yes, I, I love Awards it. Awards for love Good so Boys. Much. We need to stop doing it. Yeah. Check out the account. I want to ask you, Tell what me. has been the most awkward experience for you? Like it can be funny and hilarious also. My most awkward sexual experience. I think early on in my life when you know whatever you're kind of hiding when you're making out with someone cuz you can't bring them home or you can't go to their house mm-hmm. or whatever you're sneaking around yeah like i think i we were like getting it on in the back of a car huh. in and in bombay there's no privacy anywhere ever and like a policeman i know where this comes is. <laughs> oh my god yes. those moments and it's and i like part of me wants to be able to tell the policeman to fuck off but yeah. instead you're just like so ashamed just and mortified yeah, and it's I have just brought shame onto me <laughs> and my family you're like <laughs> This is dishonorable. Yeah, it is. They they also make you feel like that. Like and it's they, so they can easily let you be, but they don't. They like intrude in your space. And so I mean, like, we could have been married even, right? What's the? Why are you policing people? Like, yeah. I guess we wouldn't I be mean, doing it, it in the makes, car if we were married. But sense. yeah. And <laughs> why do you have to be married to have sex? Actually, it's so funny because even your own justifications sometimes belie the the conditioning. You yes, know, like why yes. did I even say we could have been married? It doesn't yeah. matter actually, yeah. and it's not the policeman's business. And we yeah. weren't parked in a no park. Or, you know, or it was not like was whose peace were we disturbing? Like, don't you have better issues to go like solve crime? Yeah, <laughs> catch a thief, sir. What are you doing? Why are you intruding in my consensual <laughs> yeah. sexual activity yes. and making this me feel ashamed? Me and the girl you. feels so much more like sh- yes. she should be ashamed. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like the person who's catching you. will make it a point that the girl feels worse about it than the guy like what kind of woman yeah, like should be doing that yeah like kaun se aap aapke maa baap ne kya sikhaya hai kya sanskar hai like it, it'll just be a line of questioning that is so totally misogynistic and patriarchal and such yeah. just double standard what is your ultimate sexual fantasy mm i don't have any of those like role play ones like you dress up like a school girl and like that that no. is not that just makes me Like freak out a little bit, but uh, I don't know. My fantasy, I think, is orgasming. Like that is my Mostly ultimate, <laughs> ultimate fantasy is to orgasm for women. So yeah. Oh man, I would wish it wasn't to, a fan. It didn't, shouldn't need to be a fantasy. Yeah, would love to experience that regularly and frequently. For me, um, my vibrator changed the game. Like suddenly, I can have an orgasm I've been, whenever I want. I've been I thinking want. about getting one. Get one. Yeah. It is it the. It is like. the most radical sexual discovery i have had in yeah. my 30 years of being alive i can i can believe that a dual action vibrator that provides clitoral and vaginal stimulation at the same time it is like no man can <laughs> yeah unfortunately <laughs> it's, it's such a drastic it's technological upgrade that i feel like you i don't it's i can't even it's like going from a from a bicycle to a ferrari i don't Ooh, know how to explain that has explained it perfectly yes yes <laughs> because on average it. on a good day if the guy is super skilled it will take me at least 30 minutes to yes, come yes yes this thing will like take me then 3 minutes every time 3 minutes oh that's i didn't even know it was possible it was so radical for me yes <laughs> for yes oh my god i totally will Okay, last question. Men are redundant. Honestly, Men once you've had that so casual disposable. sex, is like not even like why? It's just too much effort. Yeah, like I don't want to go out of my house. <laughs> I don't want to like meet someone and then be interested in they like whatever they. And then they don't about. even make you come. Like, yeah, what? and then they're not even good, and it's like sweaty and uncomfortable. Like I do. I the future of womankind is just like cats and vibrators. Yes. Like that's where we're going. That who oh, man? <laughs> I I love that. I would love that in my future. I would oh love it. man! Okay. It's also because I've been living alone, so like the the need of man is. Thought, like ridiculously severely reduced now in my life because I do everything by myself. I'm paying my own bills. You are the man you wanted to marry. Man. I am the man in my life. Yeah. yeah, like I'm ready to like marry someone and like give them a good life. Like it would be really fun. But uh, yeah, like once I have a vibrator, 
I am never <laughs> leaving your house with again. Man <laughs> for sexual needs. That's not, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, last question, last question. To what extent do you think love and sex are related? Do they need to be, if they were a Venn diagram, what would they look like? They don't even have to touch, like if it's love and sex. I feel like more than love, it should be trust. Like some basic amount of, I implicitly trust you to be in this extremely vulnerable situation with you. And that goes both ways. Like men and women should both be able to trust each other, even if they are strangers like even if you're with a stranger and you're it's a one night stand you should be able to just get some things right like are you okay with this are you comfortable are you okay like you should keep asking each other that constantly keep getting consent why even while you're in the middle of the act like it should it's just it's an ongoing yeah, consent it, is it, ongoing it, it's like People you should to... you shouldn't just get consent once in the beginning and this, then just assume that you can do everything else you should you should keep checking in like regularly and yeah like love does make sex better and like it's more intimate you you have more feelings involved and but it can also like if you're in love with a person and then if you go the next step which is monogamy then it in the long run it can also be boring so like it doesn't always mean that if you're in love then your sex will be amazing like it could be it couldn't be more than love it I feel like it should be trust. Like, just I'm trusting you with my body, and you're trusting me with my bo- like, with your body, and we should respect that. We should. This is. This, this should is, be some basic prerequisites yeah. for any sexual experience, love or no love. Yeah, yeah. Where respect and trust are. Yeah, exactly. Like taken for uh, are given. Yeah, and gratitude. <laughs> like we should express gratitude all the time when when we are like having sex with people because like someone has agreed to have sex with you. Like that's pretty cool, and you should like thank them thoroughly. Men and women, like it, it would be fun. A mutual, yeah, like gratitude. This is cool. We're collaborating. Like we this. <laughs> We're doing this collab, <laughs> and like so fun. I will give you a shout out. Like it will be, be cute. Lastly, what is the greatest life lesson you've learned from Patches? The greatest. Oh, this is. I can talk. We can we have a whole another hour where about we just Patches? Talk about my cat. Well, I have learned, I genuinely have learned many things from him. Like, I've learned lessons about boundary, personal space, consent, and just this love languages can be different. Like, some people's love lang- languages. You have to watch like, the Just Meet, uh, Meets Patches highlight on Srishti's Instagram. Like, yeah. that is a whole For context, there thesis was, yeah, on there was, <laughs> toxic relationships. I have a cat called Patches and then there's this friend of mine who was uh, traveling. So she left her cat with me. So I was cat sitting for like a bit. And her cat's name is Just Meet. And uh, Patches and Just Meet, uh, there, there was some romance come friendship that unraveled while just Neet was in my house and it's all on instagram so please check it out it's really funny i projected a lot of my uh, insecurities <laughs> sadness it was unrequited trauma. love <laughs> yeah like not so of, much a romance a lot of my baggage <laughs> is what i projected <laughs> there like yeah these cats <laughs> are cute puppets and it's it was fun. It was. It's, it was it's cool. profound. Honestly. I'm glad it's spoken to people. It on, spoke on to level. me, man. <laughs> oh, it was so fun chatting with you, Thank Shishti. You so Thanks much so much for, for being me. here. Thank you. I hope you guys liked this video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you did. Follow Srishti on Instagram. Watch all her content. She's amazing. You probably watched it already. And in the comments, you can tell us what's been your weirdest like sexual experience. Do that for <laughs> sure. Definitely leave us a comment, share the video, subscribe to my channel and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.